Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Uh, today's title is so... I love today's title. I can thank Keith, Keith Urban's early fans for giving me today's title. Today's title is Looking into the Fractured Mirror. His first band was called Fractured Mirror, and I was thinking about that last night, and the title just just came to me. Um, looking into the Fractured Mirror, let's pray. Thank you, Father, for being there and for just being with us in all our idiosyncrasies and all our stuff and all our mess and all our joys and all our successes. You are God of it all, and we praise you for being God of it all. We praise you for being there in the light as well as the dark. And I pray that you will fix um, our mirrors and fix our image of ourselves, because we know that our image of ourselves needs to start with you, God. Speak to me, speak to me, speak to each of each of us and say something different all at the same time. In the name of Jesus, amen. Um, I was thinking of the book of Genesis where it says we were uh, we were made in God's image and we are made to be like Christ and we are we were made in his image and I was thinking of a mirror um like how the mirror reflects back what what um what is the mirror reflects back what you see. So if I were to look in the mirror right now, it would reflect my face, it would reflect probably my head headrest for my wheelchair. It would reflect the fact that I'm I'm wearing uh green and purple glasses. It would reflect that I'm wearing a blue T shirt. And all of that, it would reflect that. Um, but the thing with with the um, outside mirror that we look that we look on, it doesn't reflect what's going on inside of us. And a lot of people have a distorted picture of of what's going on with them in the inside. And that's that's what I'm uh, here to talk about today. I'm here to talk about the, not an outside mirror, but an internal mirror um, that we need to reflect not only Christ, but we need to reflect how God sees us. And the way we know how God sees us is to first um, get into his written word, and which is the Bible, and and then the written word can become the spoken word, and the spoken word can become the living word. Uh, and that's how we fix the fractures in ourselves. Because especially when you've grown up in really, in really troubled or really ch- childhoods that were really hard. Because um, ideally, we we would have got the love and the nurturing and the self confidence and self esteem from our parents, but 
increasingly in today's world. Uh, and ideally, our parents would have taught us about faith or, you know, uh, some system of believing. But there are so many people in today's world that have had troubled childhoods and uh, grown up in very difficult circumstances. We've all had uh, a bit of a difficulty, but the but the measures are different. But but when you grow grow up in such um, difficult circumstances, the view and you don't get that love and attention, or maybe you do get it from your parents, but something happens to you to distort that view, your image of yourself on the inside becomes fractured, becomes broken, becomes pulled apart. And my goal today is to help you to start um, putting that fracture fractured image back together into a whole image. Um, In the book of Genesis, um, God said he created us. God breathed into us the breath of life. And he also created us in his own image. Now, what does the image of God look like? Well, um, uh, so the external image of God is not, not God, but Jesus, his son, is probably a nose, and it's probably eyes, and it's probably skin, it's probably a human face, because Jesus was a human, but but he was also God. So his external image is probably a person. Is a person. So he, he would have had a nose. He would have had eyes. He would have had a mouth. He would have had all of that. So, but the internal image of Jesus now is what I want to talk about. It would be an Im- He was so kind and so loving to everyone he met. He was, he just, um, and he had this thing, like what, what we would call, um, what Middle Eastern or today would call, he had like a kind of aura around him. He had like, this aura of kindness and understanding. And not that he didn't get mad, um, but he was so loving and kind and understanding. But he, but one thing I can tell you about Jesus is he didn't suffer fools well. And the people he would think that Jesus would think was foolish, he didn't. Like the the drunks, the the hookers, the the people that people thought was questionable. Those are the people that he loved. Those are the people that he just welcomed. And the religious people, he couldn't stand their hypocrisy. He was like, yeah, like dead men's bones. He's like, he was... He basically just didn't like uh, people who thought they were better than other people. Um, he like, and he was, he was, his image was so loving and so welcoming and so just. He he would be a great person to hang around with. I I know what the Christians are going to say. 
Jesus is inside you. He's there all the time and blah, blah, blah. I'm not talking about uh, this, uh, the spirit of Jesus or the, you know, the uh, spirit of God. I, I know God is with us all the time and that in turn Jesus is with us all the time and blah, blah, blah. I'm not talking about that. When I say Jesus would be good to hang around with, I mean as a person. Uh, He'd be good to, like, have a conversation with and, you know, just go around with. He'd he'd be such a cool person, a very wise person to get to know and stuff like that. And I think when we understand that our fractured image comes from, first of all, a lack of understanding of who Jesus is leads to a lack of understanding of who we are, then that's where the fractured image comes along. Because... We're looking for people to affirm us. We're looking for people to teach us. But if we don't get that, we can still have a whole image of who we are just by getting the image of who we are from Jesus. And that starts with reading his word, he says, and reading about what he uh, thinks about us and internalizing it, not just reading the scriptures and say, oh, uh, this is this is a good read. I, I did my uh, Bible study today or whatever. Like, just re- reading it and internalizing it and, and applying it and really um, taking it to yourself. Because I know for me, it... Because I grew up in a Christian home, but um, when my my father the pastor, but, you know, hearing it all the time, but when I got old enough, um, you begin to understand that your, your mom's faith and your dad's faith cannot be your own faith. Jesus, uh, God has no grandchildren, only children. So, um, how I internalized it, um, because I couldn't physically read the Bible and, and, um, and, uh, pick up a Bible and read it, and sometimes with audio reading, it, it is, just so annoying because you have to read the whole scripture and sometimes it can get a little monotonous um because of that i i formed not so much a bible reading kind of relationship but i formed a he the lord taught me to actually because of my uh, different ability, he taught me to actually hear him. And not in a spooky, verbose way, but he taught me um, different ways to connect with him because I couldn't do it through the regular way. I couldn't do it um, through the Bible, and I could only, I could listen to the Bible, but it, it didn't really connect with me, so what the Lord started doing was speaking to me, like, showing me what his voice sounded like, or it's not the voice of Jesus, it's like, It's more than that. It's the voice. It's when his voice becomes your internal voice. And 
He will work with the abilities you have. Take this for for um from me, someone who can't physically read a Bible, some someone who although audio reading a Bible is great, it can get monotonous when you have to read a whole scripture and you can't really pick out a certain scripture. Like, he will work with your abilities when it comes to reading the word, when it comes to, you know, all of that stuff. He will work with your strength. And he will work with your, even your schedule. He'll work with you, but you just have to give a little. And you can develop this relationship, too, um, where it's just a relationship between God and you. More than he wants you to read script, physical scriptures or listen to physical scriptures, more than he wants you to to do worship, more than all of that that people tell you to do, he wants a relationship with you. He wants connection with you. And all of that can be a part of connection. But um, he may introduce you to part of himself that he's never introduced anyone to before. And that may, that will start to heal you. That will start to restore you. That will start to uh, put you back together. And he will do it using your abilities and what he's put in you. And I think we've we've done a dis um, service in a way, saying God can only work if you read your Bible certain ways, if you dig into the scriptures, you get to know His Word. But that is only one way. Or saying uh, worship is. Um, the number one way God can connect with you. In my experience, worship is a way that God connects with you. And reading the Bible is a way that God shows you his word, but it's not the way. And I think when it, it's easy for able-bodied people to say that because they can pick up their Bible. They can, you know, lift their hands and they can sing and they can whatever. But what if you don't have that ability? And what I'm saying to you, what I'm saying to anybody, able-bodied, disabled, or whatever, God will find whatever way to connect with you that he can. He will use your abilities, your schedule, your, you know, propensities, what what you are drawn to. Because part of uh, being put together by God is that he gave you not only your gifts, your talents, but he gave you what you're drawn to. And he will use those things to draw you to him. So if you can speak, if you're nonverbal and you're listening to this, God wants to connect with you, too. And if you're blind and you can't even read your Bible and um, braille reading of the Bible frustrates you and whatever, 
he will find a way to connect with you. And I think that we often typecast God to say he can only do it when you're like this. And I'm not saying that reading the Bible is not a good thing or getting absorbed in the written word is not a good thing. It is. It's a wonderful thing. And if you find something that way that doesn't that you can connect with him, do it. But I'm saying that God is so vast. God is so vast. And for me I I tried um the everyday reading thing and whatever. But it became so monotonous. I was just reading it every day because I thought that's what I was supposed to do as a Christian. And when when I actually um, put the Bible down and got rid of my Christian way of thinking, and I said, God, I need you to speak to me. God, I need you to make yourself real to me. That's when this relationship, this wonderful world with Jesus opened up. And I think we have so many, we have so many ways that God can uh, speak to us. I think uh, the ways that God can speak to us are infinite. And I think the ways that God could communicate with us are infinite. In my experience, that is the truth. And I think that I sense that God wants to speak to populations that have been ignored by the church, like the um, disabled population like the um, non-verbal population, like the, um, like all these, all these different, the blind population, the deaf population, all that stuff. Because, um, and the Lord wants me to tell you, you're not fractured. You are exactly the way he wants you. Now, I'm not talking emotional brokenness and stuff. I'm I'm more talking about, in this end of the sermon, I'm more talking about um, what people would call a disability. Um, people with disabilities are not... Uh, broken. We we just have different ways of doing things, you know. Um, and so some of us have really uh, are really great people to get to know. And I think the world needs to wake up and realize that, you know, it's more than putting ramps on buildings and doing ADA or ODA things which which are which are cool but it's more getting to know um who they are on the inside and asking questions and really wanting to know them and really caring about them um past their healing part and whatever and let me say this God can heal, but judging what he wants to do in the person's life, he won't always heal. Okay. God can heal, but judging from what he wants to do in the person's life, he won't always heal. Because that wheelchair, that walker, that nonverbal thing, can be a part of a, a tool of which he will use to speak to the rest of the world. Um, 
I get several emails um, a month from people. I get I get told by my mom about how many people come up to her and saying to say I have inspired them. And it is such an honor to me to hear that. I used to not li- not like hearing that saying to saying that why do people think I have an inspiration because I'm in a wheelchair? No. I'm beginning to realize that they think I'm an inspiration because I'm doing despite my disabilities I'm doing what God has called me to do. So it might inspire them to do what God has called me to do. And I'm so grateful for that. And like um sometimes what what we think is is a detraction is God's way of just blowing people's minds. You know, I think, I don't think if I was able-bodied that I'd be so wise because I'd be, I'd be up, I'd probably be working, I'd probably have two or three kids by now that are happy enough to school and look after and all that. I have a husband that needs my attention and all that. And I'm not saying that people with disabilities don't. Uh, I know several people with disabilities that have relationships, that have kids and stuff like that. But I'm saying for me, for my purpose, God didn't have that role for me as yet. Because I may have lost the ability decent walk, but I gained the ability of observation. I can, I can observe people. I ask questions. I have a keen sense of what the Lord is saying and where the Lord is going. I'm not saying I'm perfect at it yet. I'm not saying I will ever be perfect at it. I'm not. But I'm saying because I have all this time to think and to commune with the Lord, it's it's given my relationship a depth and a deepness that I wouldn't have had otherwise. And, and um, now I... So, so what I wanted to say is, God is exactly um, you are exactly who and what God wants you to be. No matter what society says or whatever, you are exactly who and what God wants you to be. You've gotten the tools that you need. You don't need anything else that God doesn't want you to have. Would I love to walk one day? Yes, I would. Do I believe that God could do it? Yes, I do. I totally do. I totally believe that it's for me. But at the same time, I believe that God is using me right now in my chair as I speak to change lives, to transform lives through his word and by the power of the Holy Spirit to preach. And I'm so grateful. Um, I've talked a lot about physical brokenness and disabilities and all that. But now I'm going to talk about emotional brokenness. And this is what I started talking about um, when when I started this sermon. 
like a lot of people grew up grew, grew up in different circumstances and and emotional brokenness happens to them and you know that if they get into God um he will take them through through a process of removing that emotional brokenness and sometimes that process will be used with other people and sometimes it'll be just him and you going through it and him and you talking sometimes he will use counseling but i i i'm I'm here to say you don't have to stay in that fractured mirror state. You don't have to stay when you look in the mirror. All you see is some something fractured. You see someone God created as beautiful as ugly, and that's that's what you see in your fractured mirror and. I believe that's what God is cleaning up. You're not broken. You're not done for. You're not was what happened to you. I'm sorry about what happened to you. I'm sorry about that molestation. I'm sorry about that bullying and whatever has happened to you in the past. It is not fractured. You are not fractured. You are not broken. God wants to restore your image of yourself. God wants you to see the beautiful person that you are inside. You are not the mistakes you made. The mistakes you made are something you did because you didn't know what you were doing what to do at the time see we do what we do because it's what we know at the time because all of us all of us do what we do with what we know at the time if nobody's told us we are greater than our circumstances we don't know if nobody's told us we are greater than drug abuse, we don't know. If nobody's told us that we are greater than hoeing around, we don't know. So I'm just here to tell you, you are greater. And God loves you so much. And your mirror doesn't have to be fractured. The way you see yourself does not have to be broken, does not have to be um, skewed. Healing is possible. All you have to do is take a step towards God. And when you take a step towards God and towards his love for you, um, it'll begin to change your life. And it will be a process. But he's coming after your your self-image today. He wants to heal, restore, and deliver you and give you his image. Because in order for you to change your image, you need to get into the image of the person who's made you. Before you try and fix up that that external image, before you try and put on all the makeup and all that stuff to try and fix what's going on on the in on the inside of you. See, the problem is we we try and get all this external stuff. We try and get 
on the makeup and hair and all that stuff to fix what's going on on the inside. But all of that can't fix what's going on on the inside. You need to pluck up whatever demonic messages that you have received that have created um, this chasm in you. You need to go to the root either with God by himself or a counselor or through books or, or through therapy and pluck it up and get some new words in you. Um, I remember, uh, one, one time this person I loved very much on their way out said something really awful to me, uh, in anger. And that, those words stayed with me forever. So what I had to do was pluck them up by the root and replace them. What God had to do is pluck them up by the root and replace them. And I spent nights crying on the floor thinking that's what I deserve because that's what that person said. And that person was really close to me. Um, so, but I had to pluck them up by the root. And, and there's been so many words, so many horrible things that have happened. So many negative words, like you'll never be anything, you'll just be like your no good father, or your no good mother, or whatever, or, or you'll be fat, or whatever it is, and those words have create, created, like, because um, everybody is a garden, everybody's spirit and soul is a garden and words are seeds and when a word is said either positive or negative it can either go into uh, a, either grow into a weed or a seed and and a, and a lot of us have weeds growing up instead of flowers, flowers, and the weeds in our garden, they're blocking up the beautiful flowers that God wants to grow. The beautiful seeds are being blocked by weeds, but I'm coming today by the power of the Holy Spirit to proclaim those words, whatever they are, have no power over you right now. Close your eyes right now. I'm doing this too. Close your eyes right now. Think of a time in your life where someone who was supposed to plant a seed to grow into this beautiful flower instead planted a weed go back to that time and sit with the and for a moment just a moment feel the pain feel the hurt feel the anguish feel whatever you feel in that moment And I want you to know that it wasn't your fault, whatever it was. It wasn't your fault. Whether someone abused you, someone said something to you, whatever that seed was, 
or whatever that negative action was. It wasn't your fault. And you can be delivered. And his prayer for you today is to be delivered from all those negative words and I'm coming to start the process of plucking up and destroying those negative words. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit those negative words that have held you for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years are now being destroyed, dismantled, discarded, never to be seen again. I declare it in the name of Jesus. And anytime the devil comes to you about that and starts playing on, on your on your um, insecurities, you can say, no, 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 that's gone. And the more you do that, when I get off this sermon, the more you do it, it will come to you again and say, remember you're this, remember you're that. And you just say, no, 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 I'm not. I am more than what they said about me. I am not good for nothing because the Lord says, I'm a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Replace those words. Replace those words. And know that you are not those words. You are not what they said about you. You are what God says about you. And ask him to tell you, Lord, this is what I had to do. I had to say, Lord, uh, what, what you said about Paul was great. What you said about Peter was great. But I need to know what you say about me. What you said about Rachel. And why these words were so bad. And he told me, you are a voice for a generation. And he said, you are my girl. I love you. And, and he said to me, you're badass. I love you, girl. And those words watered something in me, went down into the seeds of the soil and of who I was and restored me. So they weren't words for Paul and Peter that I took on to myself. They were words that he handcrafted for me. And that's what made me so, it was so great. It's nice to take on the words from Paul and Peter and all those wonderful biblical um, examples. But he will give you words ex especially for you to destroy yokes, to break chains, and he is doing that right now. I envisioned him going down into soils and destroying, breaking, releasing people from bondage and breaking change, breaking chains and bringing change. Thank you, Lord. I declare that every soul from this day forward will never be the same. All of those words in that soil go down to that soil and bring your fertilizer, holy fertilizer, to just fertilize that soil. Now, when the seed, when the weeds have been uprooted, 
we need your soil to fer we need new seeds and then we need your fertilizer to fertilize that soil so that good seeds can grow destroy all of the negative words and up and tonight when they come back tenfold we can say no 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 you said this about me give us all individual words for our life individual phrases that fit with our personality our way of being that we understand to combat all this you know you know when the devil comes to me now i'm not perfect about it at it now but when the devil comes to me i i just say go back to hell from when you can you know you know is he i say go to hell <laughs> And that's the only time I say go to hell because he, he lives there and he doesn't bother me again. <laughs> when I say that, that that's the thing that God gave me to say to the devil because I am not living in his words anymore. I am not living in his his insecurity anymore. I am not looking through the through a fractured mirror. I'm looking through a mirror at a woman who is healed, who is restored, who is delivered. I am not broken. I'm not broken. I am healed. And and the thing about that is god will bring the people around you that you need god will bring the counselors that you need god will bring the doctors that you need god will bring the people that you need if you just take a step to say god i'm in pain god i need help he will do that he will bring the right people the right church the right the right people to walk with you there is power in the name of jesus there is power in the name of Jesus, there is power. In the name of Jesus, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. And today, God wants to heal the compound, the comp, the compound fracture. A lot of people, you're not dealing with just one fracture. What one state of brokenness? You are dealing with brokenness. You are dealing with grief on many levels. And he's come to deal, to uproot, to destroy the weeds on every level today. He wants total healing, total wholeness, total restoration for you today. And it's available in the name of Jesus. And I, and I proclaim now, be healed in the name of Jesus. Start the process today. Start the process today. I declare 
the chains of apathy broken. I pro- I declare the chains of the chains of the procrastination broken. So some of you are dealing with like oh you know you know what you need to do but you keep procrastinating you keep procrastinating thinking I'll deal with it tomorrow. You can't deal with it tomorrow. When tomorrow comes, you don't deal with it. Some of you think it will be easier to sit in your pain because you're like, Rachel, I tried it. And it hasn't worked before. I tried the whole Jesus thing and it didn't work before. And he said, Try again. Try again. He loves you so much. And he wants you to try again. You know, oh shit, I love shit. He wants to still see you healed. He wants to see you whole. He doesn't want to see you trapped in addiction. He wants you to know that there's a brighter day right around the corner if you just stretch out your hand and ask for help. Call that center. You've had the number forever, but you just refused to call. Call that person. Send that email. Send that email. Call that person. You have what's in you. Everything you need is in you. Everything you need for healing and for wholeness and for hope is in you. Is in you right now. You just need to trust God. He's got you. He won't let you fall. You have the number for that center. You have the number for that clinic. Call them. Pick up the phone tomorrow and call them. And if you need a buddy to to to, to hold you accountable, call, call a friend to say, I have to call so and so this more tomorrow morning. Can, can you help me? Can you hold me accountable? And don't stop harassing me until I do it. You know, healing is there, hope is there, help is there. You just need to reach out for it. And you're not alone. Whatever you're going through, there. There's been people who've gone through exactly what you've gone through, and they're waiting to help you. You don't even know all the people that are waiting to help you. You just need to reach out and understand that you're not alone, and understand that that there are people who are just waiting for you. Yeah, I will shut In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for the restoration. Thank you for the fractured mirror. Thank you for the images that you are putting together. Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, remember that that the written word or the listened to word becomes the living word. No. The written or the listened to word becomes the 
the spoken word and the spoken word becomes the living word which means you walk it out and if you can't listen to it or read it he'll, he'll find another way to get it to you like i always said like i said previously he will use your ability whatever it is to get to you cuz he loves you so much and also society would say you're broken or you have a disability but he's given you exactly what you need to do what he's called you to do everything you think is a hindrance or a disservice or he can't use he's going to use it he loves it he's given you everything that you need all you need to do is trust him there as as i as i leave this stream today i'm going to um there's a song that we used to sing um Put your hand in the hand of the man who steals the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man that comes to see. Take a look at yourself and you can look at others differently. I put your hand in the hand of the man who loves me. Remember, I said um, Jesus looked at people with love and understanding. That's what you get when you when you see people that the way that Jesus sees them. You get. to take that judgment off that holier than thou opinion off and really look at people with love and understanding and wisdom and just just a new level of appreciation for who they are and that's what happens when you put your hand in the hand of Jesus really he gives you a new perspective on life it gives you a more joyful perspective a more perspective of wisdom a more perspective of understanding and i praise you lord for the healing and restoration that you that you wrought through this message thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord in the name of jesus yavamoshadavashi see you next week Put your hand in the hand of the man who steals the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man and calm the sea. Take a look at yourself and you can look at others differently. I put in your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. Bye, guys. See you next week. Thank you for joining me today. Bye.